All right, so if you've been following along, we've sketched y equals just sine x. We've sketched y equals a sine x. We've sketched y equals a sine x plus d on the end. And now I've added in this extra bit, y equals a sine bx plus d. Uh, now, let's take a look at how that works. So I have just a basic y equals sine x here with no a or d value inside of it at the moment. Now, if I move my B value, which is going to be placed in here, watch what happens. As I increase the B value, it squashes in. The period is changing. I'm going to select a very specific B value for a number here. Uh, I'm going to choose the B value of 3.14. Now, a b-value of 3.14, or actually a b-value of pi, um, look at what it's done. I've actually changed my x-coordinates here to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's, remember last time we had pi and 2 pi and pi on 2. Now, by putting a b-value of 3.14 and compressing it by this amount, what I've been able to do is create an a uh, period of 2. You can see it repeats itself after 2, repeats itself after 4, repeats itself after 6. So the period is now 2. So the B value, it's a slightly more complicated uh, thing. So we're definitely going to have to write something down here. Uh, the B value tells us the period. But not directly. Okay, so you can't just look at the B value and say, okay, the B value is 5, so the period's 5. It doesn't work that way. Uh, we can say that the period is equal to 2 pi on B. So if we want to know what the period of our, of our function is going to be, how long it takes to repeat, then we have to do 2 pi divided by whatever the B value was. In this case, the B value is 3.14, is pi. So in this particular case on the screen, um, which is example, if our equation is y equals sine pi x, so the B value is pi, then the period equals 2 pi on pi and then the pi's cancel each other out and our period is just simply the number two so now that we know that now that we understand that the b value controls the period but not directly you do have to do a little bit of maths here we can do an, uh, a question before we do though let's complicate matters by adding in an a value which changes the amplitude and a d value which moves things up and down. Okay, now uh, if we do something like this, we can see three things. Uh, the middle value is negative one because the d value is negative one. The amplitude is two, so the distance from there to there is two, and the distance from there to the bottom is two, and the period is two pi on pi, which is two. It takes two units for it to repeat. All right, so there's a little bit to go through there. Um, let's do a full work example. So this is what I'm going to sketch. I'm going to sketch y equals 2 sine pi on 4x plus 1. So 2, so our a value equals 2. That's our amplitude. Our b value equals pi on 4. Now, that's not our period. We, we don't know what our period is yet. We just know that the b value is pi on 4. And the d value we know is, is 1. And the d value is what shifts this thing up and down. So I'm just going to draw that in for now. My d value is there. So that's going to be the center of my, of my periodic function. I'm going to put a little dotted line on that so I don't mess things up. And I know that the amplitude is 2. So the height of it's going to be up here. 2 above 1, which is 3, and below negative 1. 
So they're going to be my minimums and maximums of my graph. Along there and along there. Okay. Um, now, it is a sine curve, so it's going to start up here. Uh, and it, the A value is positive, so it's going to start here. It's going to go upwards, downwards, upwards, downwards, like that. Last step, really, is just to find out what the period is. So I'm just going to bring my working down here so I've got some space. Period equals 2 pi divided by B. In this case, that's 2 pi divided by the B value, which is pi on 4. And that's pretty ugly, but it's the same as writing 2 pi divided by pi on 4, which you would know is the same as 2 pi times 4 on pi, which is 8 pi on pi, which means that our period is 8. So this means that the periodic function is going to repeat after 8 points. So I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so there's all the way up to 8 there. Um, now, remember that this is our sort of starting point. This is our middle point, I suppose. We're going to start there, which means that it's going to end here. And now we need to split 8 into 4. Okay, so this bit's going to be the middle. So 4 is going to be the middle. Half of that, 2 is going to be like the, the top bit. And halfway between 4 and 8, 6 is going to be the bottom bit. Okay, it's all... Okay, okay, here we go. A lot of moving parts. We start here. We come up to there. Move down. Down. And back. And we can go back the other way as well. Negative uh, 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. If we if we want to as well so lots to cover there you've got the a value which is controlling the amplitude you've got the D value which is controlling sort of where the middle value is and you have now got the B value which controls the period but not directly